grind a lot of it. Oh my word. See, my grandma and grandpa raised me. He was born in 1885, and she was born in 1887. He was born in Breathitt County, so he knew all of that stuff over there, the feuds and so on. Oh, okay. She was born over here across the hill on Indian Creek. So she knew everything around here, and he knew it over there. Now, what creek is this? Cow now? Creek. Cow Creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're on Cow we're Creek. On Cow yeah. Creek. That was one of the, our destinations was this Cow Creek. This is the Creek. left fork, runs into the right fork down there about that barn, the other side of it. And that's the right fork of Cow Creek. Okay, you now, where's um, Wilson Fork? What? Where's Wilson? It's, on, it's over on 30. Yeah, uh, Meadow Creek. Leave Leave Meadow Creek. But now, uh, like if we wanted to go to James Wilson Road now. Yeah. Just go back down the road about just after you pass that cemetery, the Johnson Cemetery. Yeah. Just go down there, there's a curve and another road turns to the left. Go right over there and you'll see a sign, James Wilson. That's where Jonathan lived up there too. That's okay. They call the Jonathan Flats. Yeah, that's where he lived, yes. at the mouth of the mm -hmm. Cow Creek, mm -hmm. yeah. That's where he lived. Yeah. Was there a lot of a lot of feuds going on here? Oh, my Lord, it was terrible, terrible. My grandpa was in the Army in Galveston, 1910. And he said they had their tents pitched on, but you know. He said the captain come get along. Out of the road, the captain come along. He said, Morris, they killed a man where you from a day or two ago. He wrote the newspaper down. Ned Callahan. That's the one they pushed away. He said, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, Did you know him? My father ran all the time. I told him all the time. I've been through the store and everything. Well, a little while, whatever. Come back along. He said they killed another in there where you live. Put the paper down. Big John Aikman. He said, Do you know him? Paul said, I believe I knew his my uncle. He said, You are lying. He said, I'll swear that's my great uncle. He's a brother to my grandmother. And now I studied all the way to Galveston. And there's a newspaper guy retired from Courier Journal the other day, the Louisville paper. And I asked him, I said, How'd that go there? And he said, Oh, they were very interested in those right. feuds. Oh, they were. And he said telegraph. Right. The telegraph. Right, right. Yeah. It was always yeah. printed in the New York Times, yeah. the Kentucky mm -hmm. feuds. Oh, okay. yeah. John Aikman. Uh. Yeah, he was my grandfather's uncle, <laughs> great uncle. <laughs> what about that? That far <laughs> back now, and news going to Galveston like that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and John Aikman. <laughs> was no doubt one of the worst men was ever in this country, Breathitt County or anywhere else. In the Civil War, he was in the Home Guard, and he was on the, and he got shot. The bullet hit him in the back, come out his mouth, knocked his teeth out. He got well. Can you believe it? So Granny, my grandpa, she went to visit him. He's down, some people had him, taking care of him, because he was fairly young then. Before she left, she got him by the hand. She said, Uncle John, why don't you pray? He said, Marg, what would there be any use to pray? Why, she said, Uncle John, you believe in God, don't you, in heaven? He said, poor damn little fool. All, all the thoughts is a damn fool, and I know you one now. <laughs> and this writer, he wrote a little bit about him. He said that when John Aikman slept, he fought with demons. When he slept, he fought with demons. He's on the computer, you can find him. Probably. I'd say he's on there. Well, Grandpa talked about him so much, I wondered, what did he look like? What what kind of a looking man was he? I figured he was a savage, you know, and so I got one of his daughters was living in Carlisle, Ohio. She is 96 years old. So I got the phone number and called her. She was living with her daughter. The daughter said, yes, we have a picture of John Aikman. But it's real, real large. I said, you set it up against the wall, take your camera, and send me three pictures. And she did. And I took it to, I sent it to Louisville, and there's a woman took that and painted me a picture of John Aiken. And I'm, that's the only one besides the original. Yeah. And he looked like a movie star. He was the finest looking guy you ever saw. Big. Square, big, long arms. He was a nice-looking gentleman. Yeah, sure was. John Aikman.
<laughs> He's a tough customer. <laughs> oh, he killed. I, I guess beyond a doubt, he killed 30 men. Beyond a doubt. How did he get killed now? I was going to tell you that. Oh, okay. Abe Griffey, they'd been a, Abe Griffey's boys, and, and Abe, and a guy named Huey Riley and Luther Amos, they slipped in on him, him and his boys eating supper. Of course, it was over feuding. They slipped right in. John had no pistol. They're Mart either, the boy. They just run right in the kitchen, you know. And Abe shot. When he shot with his rifle, he hit him right through the top of the shoulder and it hit the arch rock and the fireplace flew back and killed Jack Griffey, his own boy. The bullet glanced back and killed his own son. He didn't die right there, but later. So Mark started to run. John's son, and they shot him right over the hip. Water, everything come out, blood. So John wouldn't run, and there's a claw hammer laying there. John picked that claw hammer and turned that claw, and he sunk it right in Luther Amos's head, right down in his brain. Just turned it loose like that. Of course, they was shooting him all the time. And Abe Griffey, they finally got him down on the floor, and Abe stuck his pistol right there, the whole top of his head come off. That was the end of John Aitken. And they laid him out in my great-grandfather's house which my great-grandmother was his niece, and laid them in the lower room, Mark and John, foot to foot. And my uncle, he said he wouldn't go in that room for 10 years after that. <laughs> He's afraid of those caskets, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, now they killed him. They got the advantage of him. Sure. Yeah. Oh, he was a man now. Terrible. Terrible man. What, what would they be feuding over that be make them that big? Politics, a lot of it. Politics. Yeah. And the war, too. See, well, some was on the Union, some was for the, the South, you know. That still cuts a, a pretty uh, deep line through here, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 And they was on, on the Union side, there was this Captain Bill Strong. And he was terrible. He killed people and he done everything in the world. And so he got old and he thought it was for God. John Aikman lay waiting and some more men coming and riding his mule from the store and they fired and shot the mule. When the mule fell, it pinned him down. So they just walked up and emptied their guns right in his body. So this E.L. Noble wrote several volumes and he wrote this, what John said about killing Bill Strong. John Aikman said when he was, the dirt and dust was going into his throat, he said it sounded like a violin playing to him. It was one of the most beautiful sounds. <laughs> what about that? And I'll tell you, they put, they just got a little bit out of them books every week and they'd put it in the Jackson Times. Oh, yeah. And the Strongs made them quit printing it. It's so terrible. Yeah. Ah, oh, she was cruel. Uh. Yeah, cruel. <laughs> and they shot him and killed him. And Bill had a guy, this Bill Strong, he was a gun man. He had a rifle and had on the stock, Death of Many. His name was Hen Kilburn, Henry Kilburn. Henry killed a guy over there and they got him in jail finally. They got him in jail. John Aikman went, him and two more men, chopped the day jail door down, pulled him right out of there and took him to the courthouse and hung him right in the courthouse door. There's a black man in there, he begged for mercy. Don't kill me, don't hang me. John Aikman told him, he said, you have carried food to Bill Strong's men in the woods, a layaway in us to kill us. I'm gonna hang you, he hung the black man too. He said, don't cut them down. I want Bill Strong to see him hanging there in the morning when he comes to Jackson. <laughs> cruel. Oh my God, what a cruel wow. man. Good Lord. Unbelievable. There That's was good. no forgiven. Oh there was, my God, he, there's, didn't, he didn't care for nothing. <laughs> uh, there, what, what, what can I say? All them, uh, all them South Dakota boys packed a pistol when they come north. Yeah. Yeah, expected the same thing up there, I probably. Mean, I yeah. try. Gardner had a pistol in 1908. I'll tell you, them before I leave, Bill, Bill Freeman was a, a mulatto, half black and white, you know, mother's white and his dad black. He was on Bill Strong's side. So they were in Jackson over there in the city of Jackson. Strong on one side and the other 
Aikman's crowd on the other side. There's a rain in, pouring down the rain. Bill Freeman walked over. He said, John Aikman, are you a boss in this squad? Why, he said, Bill, I ain't a boss in nothing. He said, I ask you a question. Are you a boss in this squad? He said, no, but I could boss it. Boom! Went to shoot him right there and hit him right there. Took his whole eye out about that much the side of his head. And he fell like that and the rain was pouring off of the house, running down in his face and all that blood in his eye laying out. And old John Strong, who was a brother to Captain Bill, he run to pull him out. He said, don't you touch that nigger. Said, if he ain't dead, let him drown. And old John had a plate on. Plate had a, you know, what we call a, you know, bulletproof vest now. It was steel then. So Aikman, boom, and he knocked John down. John got back to his flank. <laughs> Shot him three or four times, but it didn't penetrate. Couldn't go through that steel. And old Bill lived. And he's the office looking man you can imagine. No eyeball, no the whole side of his head gone. Huh. I'm telling you now, Lord, <laughs> I can't believe this stuff, <laughs> how mean they were. Yeah, he shot old Bill Freeman, man. He went to the wrong man. Squire Deaton, he was a one-legged man, John Deaton. He said he was in Jackson one day and there's a guy named High Sanders. He was a town bully. Squire said High jumped on him. He was drunk, pushed him around one leg, you know. Squire said it hurt him awful bad and he couldn't fight him, you know. Squire said he hadn't went 20 steps to meet John Aikman. He said, John, High Sanders mistreated me a while ago. And you know he couldn't do it if I didn't have that. He said, I'll buy you a quart of whiskey if you'll whoop him. Well, hell, I don't want you whiskey. I always wanted to whoop him anyway. Boy, he said he'd come along, he went over there and grabbed him, slapped his brains out, said, what do you mean jumping on a one-legged man? He began to beg, don't, don't do that now, John. So John didn't beat him to death, but he said, if ever you ever say an ill word to John Deaton again, I'll make a rag doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a tomcat, I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. But what my grandpa said when he was at, at a house for a dinner or something, he wanted every child there in his lap. He just loved children. Uh. Just hug them and kiss them and talk to them so nice. You wouldn't have thought he's that bad or man, you know. Oh, the mercy. I'm telling you. He's a terrible man. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Let you all, right. all get started. Come on.